the agenda for today um, is to do a welcome and introductions as we did in the first uh, series of these. And then also um, for us to review uh, some things that we talked about and to give some updates on, again, the concept, uh, which I'm going to go through pretty quickly, but I think it's useful for us to remain oriented to the idea um, so you can help us understand how, how we're sticking to the, to the design concepts. Then we'll talk about the metadata and some uh, changes that we're proposing based upon our first round of conversations and the same with the functionality. And then we have some mock-ups to show you. Um, our, uh, our, our folks have been uh, working on it and, and I think it's starting to look really good and, and having something concrete I think will be very useful for us uh, in reviewing. Um, what we want to talk about today to gain from this is through an interactive discussion, and the first series of these were, were excellent uh, interactive discussions, we need to uh, make sure that we're addressing needs that exist for institutions, and we also need your input on how the system is being designed and the functions that are being incorporated. Uh, I, you know, I know uh, most of the people who are participating today. Uh, Bonnie and I do, and, and we, we've worked with you on other things or met with you. So our expectations were really high uh, for your participation, and they were completely realized or exceeded um, in the first series. So thank you very much. We received some follow-up emails from people who had ideas that occurred to them afterwards. Um, those were excellent. And all of that feedback is uh, considered and will be represented uh, in our what we're going to update you on today. Uh, just uh, again to talk about the uh, project team, um, we won't spend as much time as we did in the first series uh, talking about us, but my name is Brian Keith. I'm joined in this session by Bonnie Smith, uh, by Lori Taylor and Mark Sullivan, who um, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember what airport they're uh, Wi-Fi'd in from, but they're traveling, but uh, have remote access it looks like, and so they're joining us and uh, will participate in the meeting. Uh, when something uh, comes up that they need to share with us. Um, and then, like we did on the first round, I was hoping that um, people might introduce themselves and uh, tell us what institution they're from. And the way I thought we might do it in a way that's kind of orderly is, if you look in the um, GoToMeeting uh, module, it has us listed um, alphabetically. And so if we could just kind of go down that list and introduce ourselves, I thought it would be a way of us avoiding speaking over each other. So again, uh, my name is Brian Keith. I'm from the University of Florida. Uh, this is Sherry Williams. I'm from the University of Buffalo. I'm the Human Resources Officer for the Libraries. Welcome. This is Diana Williams, and I am from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and I am the HR Director for the Library. This is Jan Hayes. Uh, I'm the Personnel Librarian at Northwestern University Library. And I think John is with us from the University of Houston. And Judy, uh, yeah. are you able to hear us? I am. Judy, I was waiting for John. <laughs> um, it's, this is Judy Rutenberg from ARL. Welcome. Thank you. I think Lori doesn't have a microphone either, but she's here as well. Okay. All right. And that was Mark Sullivan from the University of Florida? Yep. And we're enjoying the Orlando. Sorry about that. Lisa Patton Glimsky with OSU. Welcome. I'm, I'm Melinda Flannery from Rice University. In addition to being AUL for Tech Services, I'm the search coordinator for professional searches. Okay. Hi, it's Shannon Tereski from Queens University, and I'm the human resource officer. And Brian, I'm, I'm here from um, Tom Seguinsky from the University of South Florida. Well, welcome. I, um, we've, we've got um, a diverse group of institutions, um, and uh, again, uh, the, the participation in the first series of these was terrific, and I'm hoping um, uh, that you guys will share freely your uh, thoughts and opinions today, too. Um, and so just to go quickly over the design elements, again, so that we're all on the same page, we're talking about the ARLPD Bank, which is a web application. Um, our goal, and we're hoping you'll tell us how these mock-ups address that. Um, our goal is for it to be simple, intuitive, and easy for all types of users to use it. Uh, the data that we're going to collect and that's going to be maintained by the institutions if they adopt this 
um, is a combination of externally viewable stuff that we can all use to engage the bank and search it, but then also some information that we're calling for institutions' eyes only, which would only be accessible to those of us at our own institutions. Um, it, uh, the, the database will be keyword searchable, and it'll also be possible to customize and brand at the institutional level. This, um, the design ensures uh, secure digital preservation, and the files that can be uploaded, can, it, it, we can make them searchable if they're text, PDF, or if they're Word documents. Um, the idea, and you'll notice some text in red, these are, uh, these are things that kind of changed or, uh, or, or were uh, expanded in our first round of uh, discussions. And so the idea is that the documents that people would upload that would be part of the job bank would include position descriptions, they might also be vacancy announcements, <clears throat> excuse me, and they might also be something along the lines of an activity or an annual assignment. Um, and we, there would be other documents that we could use at the institutional level, but at the bank level um, we would accept these um, in order to, to get the best information collected possible. Um, one of the things that occurred to us, and we, and we wanted to, to make sure um, that we talked about, and it didn't come up before, but it'll be part of the training that people have regarding the bank, we need to make sure that the documents that are uploaded um, do not include private information. Um, I think this is kind of a no-brainer, but um, you know, the, the intention of this is not only are large parts of the documents searchable through the PD bank, but even for the stuff that we want to um, use this as a as a database or a warehouse for on the institutional level, um, good uh, digital ma uh, document management uh, would mean that we wouldn't include these sorts of information. Um, so moving on into the metadata, we, we really want to keep the, the amount of required data at a minimal level, and the balancing act is making it as, not, as, 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 as easy to interact with and to, to maintain as possible but to also collect enough data to where um, the, the database can be um, searched effectively. And um, so we're, we're, we think we've hit that balance, but we'd like to hear your thought. Um, for working title, uh, we, we assume that would be um, a, <clears throat> a real primary uh, piece of data that people would use to engage this and that we would use on the institutional level. Um, and in this instance, we, one of the questions we had was, okay, well, what if some positions do not have a working title, they have a classification? And we call all of our library assistant twos, library assistant twos, or some of our library assistant twos have been given working titles at their departments and some of them haven't. Um, well, the idea is that someone, if they did not have a working title, that someone would be able to use library assistant two. Um, and if you have thoughts on these, um, as I go through them, you know, please um, feel free to, to let me know your thoughts. When I get to the bottom of the page, if no one said anything, I'll ask and, and you can address these. Um, the, the other thing is we're debating based upon the first series of calls, again trying to keep the data at a minimal level so people will maintain this and, and, and it'll not be any more cumbersome than necessary. We're debating the need to, um, to use uh, percentage FTE um, or the percentage of a pool time equivalent um, and to differentiate. We, the assumption is those would probably be captured in the documents. Um, so I guess I should say for these first two, does anyone have any thoughts or concerns regarding, um, I guess the action item is the elimination of, of, of the FTE percentage. Does that cause anyone any concerns? No, I agree. No, no. no it's fine. No. no, it's fine. Okay. All right. That is, that's perfect. Uh, unanimous. Um, I'll take it. Um, and then the, the next was um, the idea we were original, and we spent some time talking about in the first series, the concept of the Fair Labor Standards Act status, and that's exempt versus non-exempt, hourly versus salaried. And our thought was we're already using position types. And um, so the idea was that by rethinking the way that we're capturing the position types that we might be able to go ahead and, and sandwich this into one field. And the idea is that we'd have professional librarians, we would have other professional employees, 
um, which might be staff, they might be librarians, they might be faculty, whatever makes sense, but they're what you consider at your institution to be professional. And that's kind of borrowing the standard that's used on the ARL salary survey. And then we would have support or paraprofessional salary um, or exempt employees, and then um, all hourly and or overtime eligible uh, positions. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on the suitability of, well, first of all, the, the elimination of the Fair Labor Standards Act is a unique um, data field. And then the, 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 do you guys think that these position types are serviceable for us to be able to, to search through the job bank? Does it cause anyone any concerns? Um, I, I think this is, um, this looks fine and complete and sufficiently detailed. I would want to make sure that the search capability in the database allows people to like tick off all of the exempt boxes and search only those if they wanted to do that. That's an excellent point and, um, and we'll make sure that's the case. We, we have some mock-ups that will show the search uh, engine and, um, and, it, and that should not be an issue. Um, and we'll perhaps, make, the, perhaps the labels um, for the categories should include, you know, exempt, 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 non-exempt. Does that make sense? Oh, you're talking about the little parentheses afterwards? Yeah. Okay. That's a nice idea, but then I'd also like to see added support and paraprofessional listed as non-exempt because at UMass Amherst, the word paraprofessional is all of our support staff and all of them are non-exempt. So what you have listed here for me doesn't work with just the parentheses of exempt only. I, I agree with that. I, I agree with what was just said. So I would we... Be, I would prefer so to see paraprofessional non-exempt. Okay, so... So what we would be achieving through that is differentiating from a kind of a big category of hourly and overtime eligible, the support and paraprofessional overtime eligible, and then everybody else who's an hourly employee. Just to make sure I'm understanding. So we would have two categories for hourly. One would be paraprofessional hourly and one would be everyone else. Is that you could do it that way, or you could just list it support or paraprofessional twice and have one of them be exempt and one be non-exempt. That's because what I the terminology is, yeah. is, is good. Okay. I think, that's, I think that's good. Okay. Any, uh, any other, and, and we can make that happen. Any other uh, c comments regarding these? Okay. I think, excuse me, uh, exempt and non-exempt are the ones we would probably use the most those terms. Okay. Um, would you be able to use, um, an ex I mean, would you be able to differentiate between the categories of exempt if there's not just exempt? Would you be able to assess it and say, well, this requires an MLS degree? There would be some descriptions that would help define this. This, is a, this should be in this category because it requires an MLS degree or the equivalent. Um, this is librarianship. This is the head of the budget office who we consider a professional, but they're not a librarian. And then, you know, could, would you be able to categorize your exempt employees if you, um, if, if you ha were required to submit this data? Well, there are surveys for which we have to do it now, so okay. it's not a new idea. Okay, but then we would make sure when you search and when you interact with the database that you could just say, well, for uh, that's... We'll just pick all the exempts and all the non-exempts. We'd make it where you could pick multiple exactly. subgroups. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. For the appointment, it, the, and, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff for us to go over today, and you may have a, a great idea, and we may, I may move past it because I'm just moving along, or it may occur to you later. If you would, please send us an email with your comments. Again, um, the, the, the emails that we received after the sessions last time were really great, and thank you for the people who sent them. The appointment type. Um, we've we have um, we've kind of expanded that um, to include the residency and slash fellowship, the internship, um, and then the uh, we have the idea is that we would have people who are, have temporary or time limited positions that may be exempt or not exempt. Um, that we have people who are tenure accruing or permanent status eligible, and then we have regular. Um, 
I will want to talk about the, suit of the usefulness of tenure accruing versus permanent status, but before I get to that, does the concept of the regular, temporary, internship, residency, does that address the different types of employment, of, of, of appointment conditions that we should be considering? What would, Brian, what would you do with um, uh, fa faculty that are not tenure accruing? See, that's part of the question. You know, I'm wondering if, for the purposes of this, do we, and then the, you know, I could say, okay, well, let's just use faculty. Well, in some places, their librarians are not faculty. Um, so I'm wondering if we didn't just, given the position type breakdown, if we couldn't, ju if the tenure accruing, non-tenure accruing, if that's just kind of redundant with those professional categories above, and if we couldn't just say, okay, well, their, their appointment is really regular, recurring, possibly including faculty appointments, temporary internship and residency slash fellowship. If we just had a, a regular employment recurring or something, does that, with the, with, with the position type as a way of sorting it also, does that, is that, does that make this serviceable? Brian, um, Mr. Williams, Williams, I mean, go ahead. UB. Um, here at UB, we have um, our, our equivalent of a professional librarian is a faculty librarian, and these are ten, tenure accruing. We also have some um, faculty who are less than a full FTE, and unless you're a full FTE, you're not on a tenure track, so they're still faculty, but they're not um, working towards tenure. We also have um, professionals who have their MLSs, and the position requires an MLS, and they receive uh, permanent status if they're full-time also. So I would like to be able to differentiate some type of either tenure accruing and permanent status, because in our case, we use both. Okay, well, what I what I, you know, I, I think we can, I think we can all be happy. Um, and, 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 and I think the way you described it captures, um, I mean, the idea of setting this up to where it makes sense for each of the ways our institution handles appointment types, but then also what this metadata is supposed to be is for us to be able to interact with this, this database and search it on that, on that level. What I'm thinking is, as you may recall, we talked that there would be a bunch of fields that we could select from as institutions and we could use them and they would be incorporated into the, into the data we collected on, on each of these positions. I'm wondering if we, if we could get by, and I'd like to hear your thoughts, with, regular, with, with those posi position types above, regular, temporary, internship, residency, and fellowship, but then also have the institutional level field in which we could customize at our level the six or seven different types of conditions. And then that would serve us on the institution level, but on the, on the global level, we would, we would have something that just is manageable. Because if we really try to capture every institution, I'm afraid we would have such differences in interpretations of the words, or we would have to have so many categories that it would just become very difficult. Does Are you that, saying then, Brian, then that that would only be searchable for the institution itself? I'm really interested to see what other positions might be out there for a true tenure accruing faculty librarian. And would, would that agree. be possible if we did it that way? No, um, it would not be. The, um, the way that it would work is that um, you would uh, the the institutional level data is supposed to be data that we can use privately, and unless it's one of these standard fields, and again we're trying to keep them as small as possible, um, the um, the it, it would not be at the global searching. So what you would end up doing is searching for a professional librarian, and then you would look at it, and you could um, you would I mean you could keyword search in it. If I wanted a music librarian and I only wanted it to have, um, uh, and I only wanted tenure ones, then I, presumably what I could try and do it w would be to search the word music and um, search um, the word tenure. And presumably in a PD or an advertisement, it would use the word tenure. Um, but no, l l what I would suggest we do, because I think we could spend 
a lot of time, and, and there's been a really interesting um, stream not too long ago in the ACRL group where people were asked to describe the conditions of their employment, and it's really, I mean, there's so many different colors and shades that I think we're going to need to come back and maybe do a survey or something that tries to capture this. But again, the balancing act for us is going to be able to have something from to, to where the use of that terminology, I'm, you know, they're faculty, they're administrative staff, but they're not faculty. I think the challenge that we're going to have to address, um, and, and maybe we can come back to this at the end of this, is how we capture all the, the specific ways we do this, but we don't, um, to where it serves our institution, but it doesn't make the metadata so difficult for people at the end to use it. Um, I, I hate to move on from this, but my hope is we can come back, and if we have time at the end, Bonnie will keep me honest and make sure we come back to appointment type. Um, the other, uh, the, I don't think these are um, is going to have be t t is is um, in depth of a discussion. But the idea, again, borrowing from the ARL salary survey, was that we would ask people to indicate whether it's a law library, a medical library, or all other. Um, that captures it from the um, that that is how ARL differentiates. And then, if you chose to, you could do a search. Um, of, of the PD bank for other institutions and differentiate in that way if it was useful for you. We originally thought we would ask people to include dates. Um, the idea is that, um, at least now, is that the dates that we will use will be systems generated. They would be based upon, the, you know, when I sub, uh, submit a, a document, if I wanted to, then conceivably at some point I can manage the documents on the institutional level, or I can search at the global level based upon those dates, last updated, you know, um, and sort along those lines. Um, but that we could enter dates if we wanted to um, on the institutional level, but they would not be required of every field. Um, does that cause anyone? That wouldn't be required of every position of, from every institution. Um, we would just track the data submission dates. I Any major? Fine. Okay. And then we would also um, handle the functional area. Um, and the functional areas, um, we've tried to make this a little bit more streamlined. And it's not in, generally these columns represent kind of the way things are organized at, at the UF libraries, where you have the public services oriented stuff. And I know this will vary quite a bit uh, from institution to institution. Then you have the tech services, the way that we organize tech services. Then you have the administrative stuff, the way we organize administrative stuff. But the idea is that um, people would be able to select all that apply and pick um, from these functional areas. The ones that are in red are ones that are either added, like administration, branch management, departmental management, um, that were suggested by people that wanted to have some, some idea of, of people having managerial roles, and then systems. There were a whole bunch of I different categories of IT, and um, in order to make it uh, more manageable, we um, to make this easier for the people who are going to actually be uploading and maintaining this, we, we kind of broke it into a subcategory. Um, again, the idea is that the, this would be useful to help people narrow the results of a search of the database, but that they would also be able to search by keyword or by working title. So any, any responses to this? Do these seem manageable, workable? I was wondering why. Um the term public services is present, but the term technical services is not present. I think that's an excellent question. Um, I, th um, I think it's. I think that's a useful general term. I mean, it seems like we should either be granular or not. I mean, well, I th check all that apply. I think putting a few um, broader terms in might make some sense. I agree, and, and there are so many elements of tech services that wouldn't necessarily fall into one of these categories, just like there is with public services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, if so, again, if so, something occurs to you, um, we're going to we'll definitely send you um, links to this. If something occurs to you, um, please let us know. Um, the idea again is first to represent the functional areas and make it easy to sort, but just not so cumbersome for people to just figure this out that you know, it becomes painful and reduces our adoption. Um, and here you can see what happened to tech services. These are, in disclosure, these are the ones that, based upon the discussions uh, previously, and maybe just 
with the with tech services, maybe just by an error. Um, these are ones that were uh, eliminated. Are there any issues with, um, does, does it cause anyone any concern that if these were not included, they were on the previous list? Is there well, um, a substitute for the ones that were deleted? Like ILS, does it fit into something else that was on the prior page or communications? Is there something else that closely aligns with it and these were just duplicates? Or document delivery? Yeah, I mean, I think document delivery, um, whether that is included in one of these other categories where you work, I think um, I would defer to you. Um, if you guys think that they're important for us to have as uh, as functional areas and from the retained on the list, I mean. Well, where would you put document delivery? What would you check if you would do document delivery? Access services? That's where it would be at the University of Florida. It is a, it's a service of access services at UF. It may so not be the case where you are. So basically there's no circulation and there's no, there's no document delivery because that's access services. Hmm. Well, I think we're all in various stages of reorg. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think if we, even if we just, let's say we just went with this list where there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, there would be about 28 categories or so. I mean, if I don't think the idea of adding these back in is, is an issue. Um, you know, I think this may be an area that the most effective way, unless there's something that you see that's not um, listed, I, I mean, maybe that we should add this, but maybe we have a two-question survey to try and get like an organized response from people as to, you know. Brian, as, as I'm looking at this, it makes me wonder where electronic resources and electronic resources management fits. For the University of Florida, it would be in acquisitions. <clears throat> but that may not. Yeah, that's not our arrangement. No. Okay, but again, uh, I, you know, I think that if I were to run a report on electronic, if I were to run a search based upon electronic resources and as a working title, I mean, one of the things that might be interested in is in, at the fact is that at the University of Florida would be in acquisitions, but at Houston it would be in some other place. Um, yeah. I mean, the idea of us making them, I mean, because part of the idea was that these were functional areas. Um, we were trying to get away from, you know, really granular descriptions, but, but part of y'all's role is to help us understand if we've gone too much in all of them or in some of them the wrong way. Um, but we're it at looks, about... It looks pretty variable. I think if we did a chart that had general terms and more specific terms, we'd find that the coverage is uneven. Does that make sense? That there are too few public services or there's too few tech services? No, 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 no. I'm saying that this is a, this is a combined list of more and less granular terms. And I think some of the, the terms, like access services, don't have much granular underneath it. Okay. And other terms, like public services, have a, lot, have a boatload of stuff underneath it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that, that's what I was trying to, trying to say is that like by category, like there's some of them with more detail under them. Um, I think what we need to do is try and figure out a way um, of following up with the group and getting your input in a way that's, that's organized. I think what we've heard is um, that the functional areas are something we need to look at. And I think um, uh, and, and, and we want it to be as, as useful as possible. Um, but and so this is number two on if we have time at the end of this presentation to come back to it. Um, the the I wanted to move on into the kind of optional metadata. The ones that we went over before were these um, working title, uh, position type, appointment type, library type, and functional area. Um, those um, four or five would be required metadata. The optional <laughs> metadata that people could choose to use would fall into two categories. That that is pre-programmed, that would just come as part of the package and people at an institutional level could choose to use. And that would include employee name, supervisor name, uh, reports to, which was something that uh, came up from one of the discussions. The idea of using ranks or classification, one of the things we didn't talk about before that might have come up was the idea that it was an assistant university librarian versus an associate university librarian 
the idea is that we will come up with these and people can just use these in ways that make sense for their institution and maybe elect not to use them. Um, and then also people would be able to enter in a review date. Um, if I wanted to make my next review date for a position, you know, J July 1st of 2013, I could do that. And then as I interact with the system, it would I could use it as a way of reminding me of when to review. Um, to, to, as far as generally, like, it, and then the idea is that there's 10 customizable alphanumeric fields um, that people could come up with and use if, if they wanted to. Um, in, in, they could have something that makes sense for their institution, but not, might not make sense for other institutions. So there would be a lot of flexibility to customize this. Um, as far as pre-programmed optional metadata, uh, does anything jump out at you as something that we think is going to be so common that we should go ahead and pre-program it? Okay. I, um, um, I, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this. I'm not sure we would use this at all. Okay. Um, we have um, many positions, especially at lower levels, that are identical for multiple employees. So how would this work? As far as um, you... Well, if you, have, if you have one position description in the database, and that position is held by seven people. Do they have position numbers or employee numbers? Yes. Okay, they're, so they're rice specific position numbers. If you were inclined to use a position number, you could use a position number or an employee number. Um, again, these would be for your use only. If it's useful for you to differentiate between those seven employees that have a common position description, you could um, either use their name or you could use their position number, and then it would be the equivalent of having seven, seven employees. But you're planning to store a copy of that same position description seven times for my seven employees? Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't know how else uh, we would manage that. Um, I, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Um, okay. I mean, if you... Well, I mean, we could certainly you, have where you could have... Mul you could certainly allow it to have multiple employee names, though, where multiple employee numbers as well. That's not very difficult to do, really. Okay. okay. That's a, I mean, that's a great concept and one that hadn't occurred to us, um, or at least to me. Um, so the idea of that, um, would, would you interact with this uh, database um, with the idea of, would it make sense for you to have it in here and then differentiate that there are seven people in it versus this is just where the library assistant one position description is? I I don't think so. I mean, that's just my gut reaction. I'd have to think about it. Yeah. But I don't think that we would do that. I mean, we do all our reviews at the same time. Yeah. So, so I mean, um, so if you just needed to have an undifferentiated position description for your library assistant ones, then you wouldn't. I mean, you would be the only ones to know that that's used by seven people. You wouldn't have to enter it seven times, and probably wouldn't want to. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And this seems to be for people who are going to use this for more, more for you know internal operations. That's the intention: is that people could could maintain this for internal operations at UF. Each of our uh, staff employees has a. Uh, in general, I can't think of anyone that's got an exact duplicate position description. Mm -hmm. um, so we would use these. We would be able to populate these based upon employee name or position number. And do you think that you're going to do that? Yes, because okay. uh, right, because we need we one of the things one of the institutional values to UF and I'm and I'm thinking it might be the case at other places is that this would allow us to um, to do the things we talked about last time, warehouse the position descriptions, um, distribute the position descriptions, maintain um, when's the last time they were reviewed and update. So, yeah, that it, it'll it it has that um utility to it for us um, in having, you know, as the position changes over time, storing the prior version of Frank Jones's Library Associate 1 PD, you know, the, the, so the features at the institutional level, because we have differentiated staff employees, um, position descriptions, we would get 
as much, if not more, utility out of this for staff as we would for the faculty, though we would use it for both. Brian, I'm wondering about using, um, and maybe it's just something that we use as a customizable uh, field, but uh, term. So the length of term of the position and when it's up. So if it is one that is a term position. I think that's great. I, I mean, yeah, I think that, um, you know, if, if I think one of the things we could pre-program is, a, you know, anticipated termination date or term date or something. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great idea. Any other uh, comments? If any occur to you afterwards, please send them to us as, in an email. Or, um, but I, I want to get to where you can see the the kind of mock-ups. And I'm, I'm, I'm um, so the the idea is that people will be able to upload besides the PDs and the vacancy announcements and the um, uh, and the assignments sort of stuff that's part of the bank. One of the things that was very interesting that came out of the previous uh, discussions was the idea that people might also have institutional level files that they might want to upload, and we would and we're going to set this up in a way that would support that. And it would um, the word document. We always figured this would maintain access to the previous versions. It used to say PDs, and it's been expanded to documents because there's a there's more of a variety of documents that people would be using. Um, so the system will track the dates, as I mentioned before, and um, who uh, made those changes uh, at the institution level. There will also be a forwarding feature, so we can use this to distribute files uh, within our own institution. And um, then there's also, uh, and, and we could also um, export them to Outlook and, and share them with other people. Uh, the other is, um, as I mentioned before, the dates would support review schedules, and then we could also flag vacant positions and differentiate those from filled positions for the purposes of running reports. Um, and so those are the functions. Uh, some of the features is you can either run, as you'll see in a minute, either external only or internal only reports. Uh, we would also figure out a way to um, have it where if I find a position description from Purdue that I, I'm particularly interested that there's a way for me to uh, send an email uh, to the person who's registered for that institution and inquire with them. Uh, that was something that came up. We will also uh, make it possible, based upon the ARL characteristics of uh, the region that, that ARL uses, which uh, the state of Florida is, is in the South Atlantic, um, and public versus private. Uh, that will be part of the uh, institutional registration um, for using uh, the platform. and so it's possible, uh, which you'll see in a minute for us to, um, for people to be able to search based on those characteristics. Um, if any functions besides that occur to you, um, please let us know. Um, but we think that addresses all the functions um, that came up. The idea is that there might be a phase two where we try and get into org charts a little bit, um, or not a little bit, but we try and get into org charts. Uh, we're gonna, we think that's a phase two um, that would follow a successful launch of um, of this um, of this platform, and so before I move into the mockups, is there anything along the lines of the functions that we need to talk about that seem to address how you guys would see yourself using the system? Okay, um, now to the mockups, um, and so what you have here is a um, screen of um, the. You can see a series of tabs at the top. Um, this is uh, for standard metadata, which is the metadata that's required. And then there's um, institutional level metadata. I'm hoping you guys can see my cursor moving around. Um, you can see institutional um, metadata, and then you can then, then there's a screen where you attach documents. Uh, we're using this that we have state prestigious university. Um, this is just a fictional university. Um, we think uh, we didn't Google it, um, and the the idea is that. When I go in, I would, um, and this is based upon where we currently are right now. These could be changed, but the, the, these are the things that I would have to, to respond to to submit a new document. Um, the second is the institutional level, and you'll see um, we've just kind of pre-populated it based upon some fields that had been discussed. Um, there are a combination of uh, the first couple of these, which we th might come pre-programmed, and then somebody might somebody mentioned before they might like to track which external agencies this position interacts with, and so this represents a combination of 
what that institution has elected through the administration of this um, as required fields. And um, for example, the next date reviewed um, would be one that we would have pre-programmed, so it would probably come with the dates uh, like you're used to seeing where there's two digits, two digits, four digits for the year. Um, and uh, so this is what, uh, this is as an institution what the data I've said. And then there's a screen which is, uh, has not yet been programmed, which would be where we would have a browsable feature by which we could attach the documentations and identify what these documents are. So this is kind of a mock-up of how um, the person would interact with uh, as they submit um, and, uh, and, uh, and presumably it would be very similar to this for maintaining documents. Does anyone have any thoughts on these kind of end-user screens? Brian, this would be to, about to initially get your positions into the database. So you, you have a, um, a new position that you've created and you want to be able to get it into the database. That's what these screens would be used for. This is what these would be used for and then probably some, uh, something that looks very similar to this if you needed to go in and, and, and um, maintain the system. Um, like you had a new PD and you wanted to add it to that same position. Um, but yeah, but this is how you would interact, either establishing or creating a new record. So on the on the tab for institutional metadata, if we wanted to add a position, um, digital initiatives librarian, but say for some of these things here, employee name, supervisor name, if we weren't necessarily going to use them at the institution, um, at OSU we have a fairly robust PeopleSoft system. And you know that's where we would track a lot of this data. Could we just upload the, the PD so it gets into the bank for other people to be able to look at or view or, or you know get some information on without having to populate the institutional metadata tab? Sure, sure. And for you, this, this screen would, uh, would, would not have any fields that it wanted you to um, fill in. So you would just have the standard metadata, and again, we're trying to keep it as small as possible, but to where it's actually useful. Um, and so you would just have this first screen, and then you would have the attached documents. Okay. Brian, and then I this, have a question. Uh, yes. About the attached document page, and, and what you're envisioning in terms of the most useful. Are you envisioning people are going to upload PDFs or Word documents? or a combination? We are assuming that we'll get a combination of text, PDF, or, or Word documents. Um, and the institutional repository at UF has the character recognition software um, that is really effective for all of those and, um, and will support the search feature. Um, is, there, are there some, is there some other format of document that we need to consider? Okay, but, but we, we would take multiple uh, varieties of documents. Um, so this is how someone would add or maintain um, a position. Um, and, uh, you know, the idea is that it's simple, that people won't find it too cumbersome, um, and, um, and, and so therefore they'll, they'll adopt this and use it. But, it'll, but by being uh, modifiable, it will also serve their needs. Uh, I'm going to, this, the idea is that there's a record view once you've submitted your data, and this is kind of a, this is a, a real um, fictitious, um, even though it's got Mark Sullivan's name on it, a lot of the stuff is, is in, is either, it's a combination of accurate and inaccurate. So again, this is my institutional level view. Um, I work at State Prestigious University, and um, this uh, is the working title for this position. And um, this is the record, um, and I can interact with this uh, by either editing the position or managing the documents associated with the position. And um, so this is what I would see as kind of the record for um, this position, and it's got two documents associated with it. These are public, um, and then it's got ones that, for whatever reason, at UF, we've um, decided to use an institutional document. And we do not share our advertisement. We only share the position vacancy and the position description. Um, and so I would be able to interact with these with this record. This is just kind of a snapshot of what's on there. And it would be based upon the metadata. You would have these required ones. 
um, but then it would also have the um, the ones that we have uh, selected on our own. And then we have, um, there's two levels of search. Uh, the idea is that a lot of people will use the job bank, to, to the position bank, just to kind of um, hunt around. And we want to make it as simple as possible um, for, for someone just to do that sort of search. And so the idea is that people can do a keyword search, just a simple uh, text search. They could use exhibits. Um, and they could choose that they want it anywhere in the record, or they could only they could go based upon working title alone, um, or any of those five required fields, as long as they're looking for all institutions. Um, and so that this is the basic search um, at the institution level, um, and this is the advanced search. At the, at the global level. I should have said at the global level. This is all, an all institution level. So this is, the intention of this is for it to be very simple. And there's a search button. You hit that and the results would come up. This is um, the advanced search. And there's two types of advanced search. Um, the first is on a global all institution level. The next, which I'll show you in a moment, is at the state, at the institution level, which my institution is State Prestigious University for this example. And so I would have the same uh, keyword search that I could direct based uh, the same as the basic search. But I would also have um, where I could um, have one um, specific to working title. Um, I could have um, where I could, I could only look at certain functional areas. And I can click on multiple uh, within the functional area. The appointment type, if we continue to use that, and the position type. But the idea is that because this is at an all institution, only the required metadata uh, would be um, would be used here. Because the other metadata might be private; it might have people's names in it at my institution level. I could also say I want all of the libraries. I could say I want just the law libraries. So that's the um, this would be this is limited by institutional variables. And um, I think we'll, we'll end up changing this to library type versus institution type. Um, but then the institutional, whether it's a public versus private, according to the way it's um, indicated in ARL, and the, AR, and the region that that state would fall into based upon ARL. And so Brian, the, yes? Question for you. Um, would you be able to, when you talk about the limitations, um, do you have to check public or private, or is there one where you could just get all? Yes, you would be able to get all. Or? You would be able to get all for either of these, for any and of then, these. Great. And then how about the um, the other library? You know, we did have, sure. when we were putting them in, we had the choice of medical, law, or all other. Um, if it didn't matter to us, if we were looking for digital initiatives librarian and we just wanted to see some samples of what what um, a job description looked like. Could sure, the de get the, all three. The default for everything is all. Um, okay. So the default for all three of these, and in fact, the default for all position types, if you don't indicate, is all. Now, if you just went in and you didn't fill any fields out and you hit search, you would get every position description or document that we have. Um, the other field that's not on here that we need to add to, on here um, would be if for where we can um, what we might want to think about doing is uh, once we actually start interacting with this is we may want to be able to differentiate whether I only want to see PDs I only want to see advertisements or I only want to see the other stuff that's probably going to come from assignments or something um, so we may need to do a sort by that but based upon what's in front of you this is at the institutional level does anyone have any other questions or this is the all institution level, the global level. I'll show you the institution level in a moment, but it's going to be really similar. What we've added there is um, it's, it has all of the required features, so the, the advanced search is the same. Um, these are the ones that are required of all records. But then it would also have, it would populate based upon the terms that we are using at our institution. In this instance, we're assuming that state prestigious university only uses name, position, number, and department. And I would be able to differentiate from those. Um, does anyone, and, and so this would populate based on that. Um, and our intention is that it would, it would stop at like, if you use 50 different metadata things, uh, you know, if you did that, um, it, the screen would stop at five and you would have to manually add 
But the idea is that it would begin to populate based upon the metadata you use at your institution. And so you'd really be able to whittle this down and to slice and dice this in a lot of different ways. But the, the key difference is the scope of the search. The all institution um, is only the required stuff. And then my institutional level review, how I access and can find specific records would be um, where I could drill down using uh, in, in, uh, the, the information specific uh, to my institution. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so w w the search results, um, this is a kind of a schematic of what the search results uh, page, which I'll show you in just a moment, looks like. And so the, the idea is that there's a header um, area that's represented in this red, and, it's, and it shows the current search that you implement, and it allows you to modify the search terms that you use. This will make more sense when you see it in just a moment. On the left side, there's a thing that called uh, facets, which is allows you to narrow your search with just quickly viewing the metadata that resulted from it. The main menu, as you might think, includes the list of the um, items that matched it. And it's the idea is that we wanted to look kind of like the way Microsoft um, Windows sorts files, because most people are used to that when you search for a Word document. Um, so hopefully, it'll it'll remind you of that in a moment. Um, but the idea is that you could customize um, with the columns that represent the metadata that you're inputting that you could sort based upon those. There's check boxes that you use um, for action items like forwarding or, um, or, or other uh, maintenance. Um, and then that you um, would, could click on a specific position and it would open up the metadata or the documents uh, that are public or that is from your institution if it's your institution. And then there's an action bar that allows you um, to, once you've clicked on a checkbox, it allows you to, um, to um, do something uh, like forward. Um, and so this is uh, a mock-up of what it looks like. Again, this is at the state prestigious university level. And um, this is a result of the search. The search at the global level would look similar. Um, the uh, idea is that um, I searched um, the use of the word technology anywhere. Um, I only wanted public institutions for some reason, and um, these are the seven positions that came up. And so these are just, obviously these are just all populated for, for the purposes of the presentation. The institutions that are represented are the University of Florida, State Prestigious University, and you can narrow, you can sort, um, you can unselect based on these. Um, you can see the position types that are represented by this very limited um, use of search terminology, the different appointment types. Um, and so you can see um, the uh, metadata, um, the, the, the types of the metadata for the positions that uh, fit that, those search terms. Um, and the idea is these are searchable. This is how you select on it. Um, and you know, one of the things that is a premise of this is that for the global search, you would have few columns uh, because there's not a, uh, you, you would have some institutional information about where, what institution it came from, but generally it's going to be um, based upon the data that we collect, working title, uh, position type, those four or five fields. And so it would probably fit on this screen. If I am at an institution where I use 20 fields at the optional institutional level, that will appear on the report, and I can you know, hide some of these columns. But really, because we're kind of more sophisticated users of this database versus you know, like a normal web app that the public uses, um, it's understood that we would probably just scroll over and be able to access those fields that are useful to us that would go off of this screen. So does anyone have any third thoughts on how the search results come forward. The idea is simple, easy, intuitive, because people are used to seeing stuff like this. Did we hit that bar? I think it looks good. OK. I agree. It looks great. Agree. OK. Yep, okay. yep I agree, agree. too. OK, thank you. Um, let me see. Now, before we go back to, and we talk about some of the things that I sped forward on, is there anything else regarding the ARL PD Bank, uh, which we may have to have a different title because we're using ads and other stuff now. Um, the, um, the, is there, 
is there any are there any other thoughts that you have kind of at the outset some things we should consider some things we haven't considered but we should just a, I hate to go back but just a question on your last screen when when you get the search results and you see them there you can click on it and then the actual document the actual PD shows up or the actual job advertisement or something like that shows up yeah, based my on what we would click yeah the idea is that um, you would be able to access the record and through that you could manage the document or edit the metadata um, or if it's um, a global search, you, that would be at the institutional level. If it's at the global search, you would be able to yep. um, access the document. Great. Thank you. Okay. And if I got that, and, and Mark, we're on the same page as how we've been describing this, right? That at the global level, you'd be able to see a, a sample position description. Yes, you would be able to. Well, you would be able to see at the global level. You would be able to see those three categories of documents that people submitted um, that um, are in the that are in that public category. I can't remember where I saw that. Yeah, you would be able to see the public documents, um, but you wouldn't be able to see the private documents if mm -hmm. it's not your institution. Great. Okay. Um, Okay. Well, I um, any other kind of general things before we um, try and go back and um, and revisit some of the prior points? I just wanted to say that Mark. Sorry, I just wanted to say that on that last question, Mark said that absolutely. Uh, all agreed. Okay. Okay, Brian, it's Diana. I wa I wanted to have you go over um, like how. And who would be able to use this? Like, so for your institution, you could set up only five users, or it's open to anyone to use. I'm trying to figure out like the security of it. Well, the the idea is that this is um, that you have to have a login, um, right? And our intention is for uh, for there to be um, uh, a for us to track the logins based upon. Uh, institutions that are eligible to participate, um, but as far as a, a set number um, of uh, people at an institution who would have access to this, I, I don't think we're anticipating um, the idea that I would get one institutional password and share it with everyone at the UF libraries, um, but I also don't think that we're anticipating that I would um, necessarily take um, a um, my institution that I would um, ask for a username and password for all 57 people at the UF libraries who supervise in order for them to access the position descriptions. So I think it's somewhere in the middle. I would think that this is clearly okay. intended for HR staff. Um, but I could also see like where our, our associate director would sure. find this very valuable to go in and see you know what other people are doing, especially with some of um, the newer trends of areas and things like that. Um, just recently, we were looking for you know copyright and what were other places doing, what what was included in the job description. So um, rather than putting a call out on the listservs, you could go here. You know what I mean? That's the intention, and, and so I think clearly um, people who have administrative, you know positions. Um, I could see them as, uh, as folks who um, would, you know, who could, who would um, have a legitimate purpose for it. I also think that one of the things that we need to iron out um, is the idea, uh, if we were to have um, uh, a, um, in that these are public and we're sharing them within ARL, is it agreeable to us if we were to have, um, you know, someone who seemed to be a, a bonafide um, uh, researcher, you know, if somebody, um, well, I mean, if ARL had an intern who wanted to access the global level information on this for a dissertation, I mean, it, it, and it was all stuff that we said was public, um, you know, I, 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 that's a kind of an exotic, but I, that's also kind of a scenario of user that's occurred to me. Um, we're getting really close to the end of time, but I hope I answered your question. The idea is that there's yeah. you know, a re reasonable number of, of users that, w that 
and we would want them to log in so you would know who updated the PD. Um, and you would probably want to limit it because they're, they would be able to modify um, stuff conceivably. Right. Um, the, um, one of the things that I need to come back to, and I don't think we'll have enough time to really talk about it, it unfortunately, is this functional area um, and nailing down how, um, how we make this serviceable. Um, you know, I think what we need to do is try and come up with um, a, uh, a survey that we follow up with, um, with you guys, and then we also bring to the ACRL Personnel Officers Discussion Group at Anaheim and solicit input. Uh, what I can tell you is that the effort was to make this more meaningful than what's in the ARL um, salary survey. Um, that it's more granular because there's some some constraints on that that, that we've all discussed. Um, so, so regrettably, I think that we're probably just going to have to figure out, unless you have some thoughts that you want to share by email or some alternative versions of this, um, that you, or some just omitted positions that you can identify, I think what we have to do is we're going to have to figure out a way of following up and kind of surveying so we can have an organized um, um, kind of assessment at, at how useful um, these functional areas are as defined. Brian, something I think we need to think about is whether it's really worth it to put a huge amount of effort into this kind of taxonomy given the keyword searching functions we're going to have available. I agree. I, I mean, I think that's a great point. Um, I think it's, I think that's a, a you know, a, a real legitimate point. Um, we'll try and figure out how to address this in a survey. I, I, I appreciate y'all's time and, you know, we're a little bit over an hour. Um, your, your input has been terrific. Um, I know most of you guys, so I expected nothing less, but it's really been impressive and you've been very generous with your time. If you do have some thoughts that occur to, to you that you would share with us, please do. They, I, they really have been useful. And uh, thank you very much. Um, and um, Brian, if you can just make sure when you're following up on those, that piece about tenure track versus non-tenure track or um, permanent status, if we can just remember that that one needed to I think there were the two points you wanted to follow up, the functional yes. areas plus that tenure area. I know that's okay. an important one to us for distinction, so, okay. so just so it doesn't get lost. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Right. okay. Anything else? Um, any other parting comments? Nope. Seems Thank exciting. No. Okay. Well, I, okay. Well, I sure appreciate Charles' input. Um, it, it, you know, I think this is the. the I'm going to shamelessly praise you. Um, the, <laughs> you taking the time out of your schedules and, and, and the quality of input that you've offered on this has, has really been um, more than we could have hoped for. So thank you very much. I hope you have great weekends. Brian, yeah, will Bonnie thank you, send Brian. us out just thank as you. she did last you time? Too. Absolutely. You'll receive uh, links to uh, the recording in case, you want to, in case you want to listen to it again and, uh, and the information that we've gone over today. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you bye -bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.